for y'all. I love being on campus. Uh, some of my favorite subjects were, were history. Mr. Brashar is who I had for history. Uh, physics, I had Joe Fontaine. Uh, Algebra two with Mr. Dalkey. I also had uh, some fabulous teachers. Uh, I'm not saying that they're not, but I also had Miss G. I was in an art class. I had advanced art. Uh, I also had uh, Miss Elaine Conley as an English teacher. So I was very blessed at that time to be at Foothill with such uh, a great group of instructors, man. And I felt like um, they were really pulling us out of our seats and trying to get us to understand uh, the subjects that we were learning. Uh, one of my favorite moments was uh, <laughs> being in Algebra two class. And uh, there was a day where kids, you know, they get on teachers' nerves and stuff like that. And some teachers get frustrated and you could see them. Well, Mr. Donkey, he was, I don't know what ethnicity he was, but it was like European, right? And he had this like different type of way of saying things. And I told my buddy, Javier Rambler, who's a Hispanic fella inside my classroom. I said, hey, watch, I'm gonna get Mr. Donkey happy again. He's like, what, how you gonna do that, man? I said, well, he sings this song in order for us to learn these math formulas, right? And when he sings the song, he gets happy. So I said, watch him. Check it out, I'll be able to make him happy again. So I stirred up, I said, hey, Mr. Donkey, could you remind me how to, uh, that formula, how's it go, man? How's that song go? And he would start with that song all over again. By the end of the song, he'd be smiling and laughing. And I was like, I told you I'd make him smile. Uh, another memory that I had was with Mr. Joe Fontaine. He invited his physics class out to his home. And this was back in the day where you could invite people out to your home or give them rides. Unfortunately, it's not like that anymore. But uh, it was myself, Javier Rambler again, who was in my physics class, and David Al uh, Avalos. We were in uh, Mr. Fontaine's physics class. And sure enough, he invited all the students to go out to his, his home. So we're like, let's go check it out, man. Let's go see where he lives, you know? Javier lived in the Oki. He, he was in the hood. David Avalos, the same situation, you know? I lived out in Greenfield. So I was in the country myself. So we were like, let's go check it out. We went out to, uh, to Hatchby, we went out to his home. We were like, wow, man, Mr. Fontaine, you live in a decent home out here. He's like, this is what, how I live. I'm a school teacher, this is what they pay. I was like, man, I could live off of this, something like this, you know? Uh, but what he had was a huge, I'll tell you, man, it's about the size of a basketball hoop. And it was a uh, one of those refracting lenses telescopes and that night it was going to be a full moon so he set it up on his porch and we went out to his porch we had pizza and uh sure enough just looking through that lens you could see every crater on the moon man and everything was so clear uh that to this very day i thank mr fontaine because i own a, a refracting telescope man just to check out the stars and the celestial objects in the sky because i thought it was super cool not only that it was like also part of my culture you know the mayans man have been studying the stars forever so I was like, man, Miss Fontaine is probably like mine. But he wasn't. He was just a, a good guy. And I appreciate him for that. If I had the opportunity to sit down, I'd sit down and talk to Mr. Fontaine again and tell him thank you for inviting us to his home and, and showing us like uh, what it was to get out of the city, what it was to like be in a home where you had two educators. I know his wife was an educator as well. And I just thought, man, I could do something like this in my life. This is how I want to live.